Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our second adventure of the evening, one which I'm entitling Breath Weapons. Uh, as always, before we get into things proper, we're going to take a brief moment and introduce our heroes. So without further ado, first up we have joining us tonight, uh, Taral Minoru has returned once more. Good evening, Taral. Ah, uh, hello. Uh, Taral, tell me, how have, you, uh, how have you been since last you adventured? It's been a little while. I've been, uh, I'd like to say taking some time off, but that's not really the case. What have you been these, up to? Uh, there's been these people here that have been following me around, claiming that I'm the best hope of restoring our fallen clan, and it's been a bit of an inconvenience. Who are these individuals? How do you, like, how, how do they know you? Are they members of your clan, or...? They were, upon a time, before, well, before things went downhill. Um, I'm not sure how they've heard of me. It may have been because of my few times working on Bartholomew's half. They seem to believe, while I'm in Bartholomew's employ, I am the best candidate to take the lead. I uh, understand. Uh, and do you feel like you can live up to their expectations? Uh, is this a burden that, that you've accepted, or is this maybe kind of thrust upon you when you're not quite ready for it? I'm not very confident, to be honest, but I'm not seeing what other choice I have at this point. I haven't been able to shake them for quite some time now. I mean, sometimes destiny just calls, I suppose. Uh, well, I, uh, I wish you, Tara, the, the best of luck. Uh, I, and I am, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm pronouncing your name correct, right? It is Tarao. Uh, yes, that is okay. mostly accurate. Um, give me the, give me the exact just once and I'll do my best to not make the same mistake again. It's, uh, Minoru Tarao. Uh, Minoru Tarao. I'll try my best to hit the, um, uh, would you prefer, I'm sorry, if you preferred Minoru, I'll try my best to hit the uh, Tarao uh, a little bit more correct next time. Uh, but, Minoru, welcome back. Uh, and next up, we have joining us a brand new hero here in the lands of D&D &D time, uh, a tabaxi bard by the name of an, another question of pronunciation here, uh, Inclio Twilino. Did I say uh, that correctly? Yeah, that should be it, man. Uh, Hello. I'm a... Uh, hello. It's uh, pretty different being here. I haven't been adventuring in a while, you know? Uh, well, we're certainly thrilled to have you amongst us. Uh, in Cleo Trulino, it has a nice sort of cadence to it. Bobada, bobada. It has, a, it has a nice roll to it. I like it. Uh, uh, I'm not actually sure how to pronounce it myself. My parents gave it to me, and I have not been able to find it out anyway. <laughs> uh, so this is... You know, my guess is as good as yours, it sounds like, in this particular instance. Uh, yeah, just about. Um, so, and Cleo, please uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. What brings you to the lands of D&D &D time and to your adventures here amongst Bartholomew's troop? Uh, well, I, I was a conquistador, as they would say. I just traveled over ship, and uh, I was meant to send a message, and uh, I just ended up here. It just happens that fate seemed to be on my side. Uh, here from... Uh, a far off place, it sounds like. Uh, what, uh, what was the message that you were here intended to send? Uh, Bartholomew stinks. <laughs> that's a pretty reasonable one. I feel like that's a message that a lot of people come in with. Uh, but it's weird how everyone who has that still somehow ends up getting roped into the racket too. It's very strange. Um, so, uh, in, in Cleo, uh, what's your relationship with Bartholomew? How do you uh, know this individual? Well, actually, I don't. I have no idea who he is. I've just heard his name, and it sounds pretty cool. Well, I suppose uh, I suppose you'll have to meet this person. Uh, and Cleo, uh, what skills do you bring to the table as an adventurer before we move on? Uh, well, I I'd say I'm very persuasive. I'm very agile as well, but that's that's about it. I have nothing actually good about myself. Hey, I think that those are very admirable qualities, uh, and I think they will be of invaluable usage in your adventures today and perhaps throughout your career. Welcome, Inclio. Thank you. Of course. Uh, next up, we have joining us another brand new uh, adventurer and, and player here in the lands of D&D &D time. 
uh, we have Azarion joining us tonight. Uh, did I say Azarion right? Yeah. Uh, welcome, Azarion, to the lands of D&D time. Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? You know, basic information, you know, race and class and things like that? Uh, sure. Uh, just, I'm like the main cleric, Infernal Bounty Hunter, and Tifa Infierna. Uh, yes, I uh, I get you. So you are a uh, a tiefling, uh, which is sort of a, a, a half a half devil or an individual that's been kind of uh, aff afflicted with uh, an infernal heritage. Uh, yours is specifically uh, from the archdevil Fierna. Um, tell me, you're also a a cleric. Uh, I know a lot of the times clerics uh, worship particular gods, but some of them worship the ideas. Do you have a a particular god that you worship, Azaria? No. I uh, have a plan to take them all off the throne and be the god of me. You're intending to be a god, become unto a god yourself, Azarion? Is that, am I hearing that correctly? Exactly. This is one of the most ambitious goals I've ever heard an adventurer come in with, and I respect the boldness with which you uh, are, are taking a step here uh, into the uh, lands of D&D time. Uh, do you have any... Uh, particular path uh, or or way that you hope to achieve this? Or right now you're just kind of trying to learn everything you can and, and just gather power onto yourself? Kill everybody else so nobody's stronger than uh, Well, there are a number of... You've perhaps come to the right place as there are certainly a number of situations in which there are uh, powerful individuals here amongst the uh, the adventurers of D&D time. Although there is, of course, Bartholomew's ironclad, uh, there is no PvP in the lands of D&D time. Uh, so it, you may have to uh, bide your time until uh, that can be uh, overcome. But for now, Azarion, I welcome you to the lands of D&D time, and I wish you all of the best of luck in your adventuring campaign here. Thank you very much. Of course. And last but not least, we have Deadly Massacre returning once more. Good evening. Hi, guys. Deadly Massacre. R remind me, do you prefer to go by your full name, Deadly Massacre, or do you prefer just Deadly? No, I want Deadly Massacre because I want to kill everybody too. You want Deadly Massacre 100% of the time. That we can certainly do. Uh, so... Deadly Massacre, it's been some time, I believe, since we've uh, seen you adventuring here in the lands of D&D time. Uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, but I believe uh, your last adventure was rather abrupt and during a time of great upheaval, uh, perhaps the Halloween event. Yes, and I got killed within two seconds of my spare time, and I don't like that. Uh, so, I mean, there's no better time. De deadly Massacre was deadly massacred, and so... I suppose this is your time to prove yourself and, and turn things around here in the lands of D&D time. Yes, as long as I'm not killed within one second of anything that I do. Uh, hopefully that will not be the case, but you never know what kind of outrageous adventures Bartholomew is going to send you on. Uh, actually, rumor has it from what we're coming up, there was uh, an ancient dragon in play, so you might be in trouble, Deadly Massacre. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, and that is... Uh, what you're hearing as the four of you walk into Bartholomew's shop. It's a simple place. Um, there's just kind of a, a counter and a, a door behind it, uh, and a few magic items kind of strewn about, but some of them in display cases and such. But uh, Bartholomew, the wizard, and of course your contractor here, the individual who's hired you to you know, work for this adventuring troop and go out on whatever jobs he has, uh, is bringing you all here. Ah, greetings, adventurers. It is a uh, I'm glad that you were able to uh, make it. I do need your assistance um, uh, in Cleo, uh, Zarian. I'm glad you were able to uh, find the place. I know you're new. Are you ready to uh, begin today? Uh, uh, yeah, I think I'd just about say that. It's a, it, it was a bit of a weird travel, but otherwise the ship was pretty good. I didn't die like, like uh, everyone else, but you know, it was pretty nice otherwise. I would heard um, you'd mentioned something earlier when we spoke. You had a letter for me or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, would you like me to read it to you since I have it anyways? Uh, yes, that would be fine. Uh, all right. Uh, un unnamed sender. Uh, dear Bartholomew, you suck. Sincerely, unnamed sender. 
And you see Bartholomew just kind of like frown a little bit. And he goes, all right, well, I have work for all of you. Um, there is uh, some kind of a noxious odor that has been uh, plaguing the village of Snow. Uh, it is a uh, small uh, Goliath village that lies high up within the slumbering spires. The altitude is uh, very high. The air is a bit thin up there. And so the, uh, the source of this noxious odor must be rather dense. Usually the winds would disperse such a thing quickly if there were anything. Um, we need you to go there and um, deal with whatever this problem is so the villagers may rest in peace. Do you think that you can uh, do this? Not rest in pieces in the grave, just relax. Uh, do you think all of you can uh, accomplish this for me? Yes, as long as I don't die within one millisecond of my entire life. Yes, I can do that. All right. Well, you're already going for a high score right now, uh, but uh, hopefully, um, well, I heard there's an ancient dragon up there, so be careful, and he snaps his fingers, and as he does, you find yourselves instantly transported elsewhere within the world. Uh, as you look around and, and begin to kind of acclimate to your suddenly changed setting, uh, you are on a mountaintop. It is extremely high up. Uh, immediately, you begin kind of breathing in and, and find your lungs just maybe a touch strained from the uh, strained from the height. Uh, and the area of the lands of D&D time you find yourself in is the Slumbering Spine, uh, a great mountain that just kind of slowly heaves up and down. Uh, and you're standing on a teleport teleportation circle that's just a little bit above looking over a uh, looking over a small village. You can see uh, most of the construction is of stonework uh, with sort of um, kind of flat arched roofs over the, also of stone. Uh, and looking down from the distance, you can see people going about their days and, and kind of walking about. Uh, but one thing that's kind of off about all of these Goliaths that are going about living their life is you can see most of them are currently uh, wearing some variant of uh, scarves or gas masks or just various materials around their kind of nose and mouth, um, presumably to protect them from the incredible stench, the most noticeable presence here. Uh, as you walk up immediately is just this foul uh, scent of just decay that's kind of festering in the air around you. Uh, you can almost see it. There's like a, a brown just smog that seems to be just floating and kind of hovering about the village. Uh, and this is the destination and the, the problem that you were intended to solve. Uh, this is where our adventure begins. Uh, as you all kind of step off the teleportation circle, you can see the village before you. What would you all like to do? Well, uh, I think that everyone else is kind of silent, so I may have to just take charge. Uh, I think we should go investigate. We were sent here for that anyway. Uh, yeah, that's just about it. All right. So you're going to uh, just kind of lead the way and begin kind of stepping downwards into the village? Ah, uh, yes. A musketeer's job is never done. Absolutely. Uh, so you begin moving forward, and as you're descending, there's kind of like your teleportation circle was on like a little bit of a hill that was cropped up and, and then it's dipping into something of a, a valley here and between peaks of these mountains up at the high altitude here. Uh, and as you're going down, the stench, which before you could see like visibly hanging over the city is is getting worse. Uh, and with each step, you find yourself having to like <coughs> choke back, uh, coughing. It's, it's the thin atmosphere, but also it's just a little difficult to breathe. Uh, and all of you are starting to experience this as you continue to step forward. Um, do you guys, uh, what do you do? Are you just trying to like grin and bear it at the moment? Do you do anything to kind of try and account for it? Or for now, are you just trying to like power through it? Well, Deadly, uh, Deadly Massacre <laughs> is going to say, Oh, I knew this was going to happen. Uh, why, did I, why did I come here anyway? Fine. Uh, let's just go investigate. Um, all right. I had uh, no idea the air was going to be so thin up here. Uh, and. As you kind of say that, uh, you see below you um, a small Goliath uh, child. Uh, I say small, but for a child, they're actually pretty large. Um, despite the kind of like proportions, you can tell that they're maybe only like three or four years old, but their body is already pretty big. Uh, and as you kind of uh, say that, the, uh, the little kid kind of looks up at you and goes, 
It's usually not that bad up here, but it's been really bad lately. I'm sorry, is it hard to hear me? Yes, please speak more clearly. I don't uh, like and... people. Uh, oh. uh, and they kind of take like a deep breath and then pull up their uh, little mask that they have on over their face uh, that's kind of covering up their nose and mouth and go, it usually doesn't smell like this up here. The air is kind of hard to breathe if you're not used to it, but it's usually fine. <laughs> and then put the mask back over and kind of cover their uh, cover their face again very quickly. Oh, it picks Hello? up again. Usually the town's much better than this, but right now it's really bad. I'm so sorry that you have to be in our town during this time. <laughs> uh, closes the uh, closes the thing again. How can we help? And uh, the the little boy just kind of um, reaches over and, and points uh, towards the center of the village and <sighs> takes one more big inhale and. You could probably help by going and talking to the, the chief who's over that way. I don't really know, but some of the adults are saying there's a dragon. Um, some kind of dragon or something. I don't I don't know a lot about it, but it smells... It stinks so bad. So bad. And puts the thing back over his face again. Uh, and points in the direction of a Goliath that's kind of uh, sitting. Uh, she's kind of sitting towards the center of town. Uh, and seeming to just, like, direct uh, some of the construction that's going on here. People seem to be doing things like boarding up windows and trying to just, like, stink-proof this village, but it's not really... Um, uh, it, it doesn't seem to be working out in particularly well for a lot of them. Everyone looks very frustrated and tired. Uh, but she's kind of wearing these very long, like, ceremonial robes uh, and is carrying uh, a very big, heavy walking stip stick as she sits, sits tall. Uh, in the center of the village. Well, uh, I, I think it would be in our best interest to go talk with the chief, it looks like, and uh, advance our quest. Um, and right. maybe pick up the masks while we're at it. That would also probably be a good idea. I don't want to choke to death. Uh, and I... at this point, I would like all of you to make me constitution saving throws. Oh, no. Tell them to take a shower. Uh, I don't know how to do this, by the way. Um, so what you're going to want to do is uh, click on your um, click on your character sheet. Uh, in the top left, there's a section that says saving throws. Click the word constitution. Um... I'm in the character sheet, but I don't see the saving throw. Uh, towards the top left, uh, there's a box. It's right below the box with all of the skills in it. Uh, strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, Charisma. Oh, okay, yeah. I click the Constitution one. It'll be the same thing for the skills, but the box below. Okay. Uh, great, so 18. Oh, man, all of you do so well. Uh, as you're breathing in this kind of these kind of noxious fumes, um, you're having a little bit of trouble. You know, it's it's unpleasant, but it's not impeding you at the moment. You're not really feeling any adverse effects other than just maybe a little uh, a, a little bit of sickness to it. But um, you uh, and Cleo kind of walk over and, and kind of address this woman who appears to be the chief uh, and as uh, she gets closer, you hear kind of from underneath her mask, she just calls out, you all want some stink robes? We got stink robes for you if you'd like. <coughs> Oh, this air is really hard to breathe in. Uh, yes, if, if you could, we would really like some stink robes. That would be very nice. What yeah, not a problem. Uh, and she goes over to uh, what looks like just a normal, like, just, like, traveler's robe and takes out kind of a jagged knife and been, begins just kind of cutting off uh, squares of cloth for all of you. Uh, and looks, uh, as she's doing this, she's kind of looking at her work busily, but she dresses all of you. So, uh, what are you doing up here? What brings you to this uh, small village? You've picked possibly the worst time to come, I can imagine. I just well, want to kill some hired to deal with this problem. Um, she uh, <clears throat> uh, she kind of looks at you uh, and kind of nods and looks past uh, looks past over towards you, Azarion, as you say. You just want to kill someone, and she goes, "Well, if you're looking to kill something, you've." Well, there's a dragon to slay up the way. That's what's causing all of this. 
uh, she hands uh, she hands the first uh, stink rag over to you, uh, in Cleo. <laughs> so you're the first one to talk. Oh, uh, thank you. Talk to her, uh, and it's a little bit better. Uh, and the, your breathing is not quite as like choked, uh, but it's uh it's still it's a small improvement, but an improvement nonetheless. Uh, she kind of continues. That thing's been up in the cave for years. We we pay it tribute regularly, you know, bring it things, goats and stuff to eat. I don't know what a big, it's an it's a old green dragon, very old. Been here longer than our clan has, uh, but we pay it tribute and usually it, well, it pays us no mind. But we must have provoked its ire in some way. It's just spreading these noxious fumes about the space. They're emanating from the cave over yonder. I, um, well, I don't quite know how uh, we're going to deal with this. Um, if you aren't successful, we'll probably have to pack up and move. Uh, and kind of looks up towards you, uh, Minoru, uh, and says, um, how much are we paying you? We don't have a lot of gold. I'm not privy to the details of Bartholomew's side of things, but he's paying us our wages in his own system. Um, he kind of uh, looks, uh, she kind of like looks over and uh, glances over towards, uh, you already take care of the finances on that? And another Goliath just kind of goes, yeah. Uh, and she goes, yeah. All right, well, you're going to go, what, slay the dragon? Are you really the dragon slaying types? And looks at all of you, kind of questioningly. I don't mean to be rude, but I've seen, uh, well, I've seen this dragon swallow several cows whole at once. They don't call me Deadly Massacre for nothing. I can totally slay a dragon. Wait, your name's Deadly Massacre? Yes, ma'am. That is extremely promising. I'm glad that I was sent someone who seems, I mean, were you, is that a misnomer, or were you completely cut out to slaughter individuals and make sure the dragons are slain? I actually feel very confident now in you. I think I was completely cut out, but I'm here to do the job, and I'm here to get my money. All right, well, Deadly Masker is reassuring. Also the one who said he just wanted to kill. Uh, and again, please kill this dragon, uh, because... This is an unlivable situation. As I said, our people have lived here for a long time without any problems such as this, but we will have to uproot. And there are few mountains so unclaimed and so well perfect for our way of life. Will do. All right. Uh, and um, she just kind of points up the hill, and the cave is really close to this village. Um, it is... Uh, just a, a little bit up a sort of rocky path, you can see the outline of the cave, uh, and you can also see that it appears to be the source of all of this, like, toxin and poison, just uh, kind of, like, bubbling out in, in occasional plumes uh, as just this kind of uh, greenish-brown gas just kind of seems to float down off the mountainside. Um, and do be careful, it's it's more than just a bad smell. It's it's not good for you. Some of the people who, uh, well, who went up to investigate a little bit closer have gotten pretty sick. Uh, and she kind of finishes making the stink rags for all of you and uh, as she was calling them and, and hands one out a piece. Uh, and I will need two more of these. Why? I have some acquaintances that are probably going to be running up to me soon, and I'm not going to want them to die out here in my name. All right. Uh, two more. I... Okay. Uh, and she cuts off a couple of more. What size? Oh, a standard medium humanoid should be fine. All right. Uh, and uh, she cuts them for you, and... Um, and once you've killed it, bring me back a tooth or something. I don't know. Give me something good. Just a, uh, just a token. I'll bring you the head. The head would be excellent. Uh, if you could do that. Um, actually, that seems hard to carry. We'll excavate the head later. Just a tooth for the starters. Unless you feel like it. Uh, the head's 
well, I mean, the head again would be great, but uh, don't feel obligated to do that. Um, and yeah, uh, she hands you over the last two, Minoru, and uh, you guys are free to kind of walk and, and go up as you please. Uh, the people in the village seem pretty. Um, the people in the village seem pretty, like one somber, but also just like kind of nervous and a little bit hopeful as they're kind of watching you leave the village up towards the cave and hope that this kind of nightmare of foul odors will soon be at an end. Um, and you begin to step up the cave side. Um, how do you guys approach? Are, are you trying to like sneak in? Uh, you can see the cave before you. Uh, thick kind of waves of uh, just this plume seems to come out in layers um, and presumably kind of in time with the breath of this dragon from within uh, just a cloud of gas comes through you choke it down through your uh, your new masks that you're sort of wearing but it's it's tough how do you guys want to proceed as you're coming near to the entrance of this cave I'm gonna say deadly massacre is gonna use uh, it's gonna be stealthy um, all right, so you're going to kind of creep along. You're moving along, like, the, the outside edges of the cave, sort yep. of uh, keeping to the shadows. Absolutely. What is uh, what is everyone else doing? Uh, I, I personally think that this deadly mask person, although very murderous and trustworthy, has a good idea with this stealth. A sneak attack could be a very good plan. So I'm, I'm going to... I'm just going to copy them, do exactly what they're doing. I will also stealth along the side of the cave. Um... Well, if we can get through without instantly getting murdered, that would be much better. Uh, very well. Is it stealth all around? You uh, you following the same path as the rest of your party is here? Um, Azarion? Uh, yeah, and uh, I'll use advantage of my uh, dark um, to see to the if that can. Uh, oh yeah, uh, with your, your your dark vision. Yeah. Um, what you can do is, um, since the cave that you're moving into, it is pretty pitch black, uh, and you're able to see in the dark. So you could kind of like take the vanguard here and, and lead the rest of the party forward and in if you'd like to. If everybody else agrees. Uh, so what do you uh, do? Do you say that to the party? Do you kind of like tell them? Yeah. What do you, uh, what do you uh, say to people? Guys, I can see through the dark in the game. Are you guys willing to follow? Yes, I'm willing to follow as long as we're being stealthy and not stomping on the ground every two seconds. Uh, yes, I think that should be a good plan. Uh, I agree with that. We should probably not die. I am perfectly content not to be taking the front. As long as somebody dies, I don't care. I will, uh, in that case, ask all of you to make me a stealth check as you begin to kind of creep along the walls here. Oh, we got a, uh, a pretty diverse pool of roles here. Uh, this is a group check. Uh, so you have two successes, uh, and a critical failure counts as kind of three failures, so when that comes up, I'll let you know. Um, as you begin creeping along the edge, uh, you move... Uh, what are all of your passive perceptions? Uh, Eleven. Passive perception, uh, Azarion, if you're not aware, is underneath the skills, there's a thing that says passive wisdom, and then in parentheses, perception. Um, just a second. Passive wisdom perception at uh, thirteen. Eleven. Uh, what else? Do we uh, mine is twelve. Twelve and Minoru. Thirteen. Thirteen. So, uh, Azarion and Minoru. Uh, the two of you are kind of a little bit further up here, and and as you're stepping forward, actually, Minoru, do you have? Uh, well, actually, you'd be able to see this either way. Yes, I um, have dark vision. So you begin kind of leading the way through, uh, you begin leading the way through the cave and are kind of like, you know, skirting along the edges, walking as quietly as possible, uh, taking moments, I imagine, to uh, hold your breath uh, as these waves of gas are kind of pushing through. Uh, and you 
see yourself emerging into what is obviously the lair of this dragon. You can see a mound of golden coins and goblets and items of, of wondrous power uh, and kind of like strength that are all just kind of like, you know, strewn about in places with some of like the finer looking objects and, and the real like valuables seeming to be uh, kind of concentrated towards the center of this huge pile of treasure. Uh, and those of you who have 13s on your stealth, as well as actually, um, you had a 12. So actually everyone but uh, everyone but Deadly Massacre in this instance, um, amidst this mound of treasure, you can see poking out of it in places um, what looks like different features, a green kind of scale. Uh, you can see a kind of a tail that seems to coil around the back of this kind of massive chamber, and you can hear a heavy low grumble of this kind of dragon's breath underneath, uh, underneath everything here. And with each breath, another plume uh, of this noxious smoke seems to rush out of the cave and into the world beyond. Uh, but the dragon currently just appears to be sleeping uh, amidst this pile of treasure. Um, you guys circle, are kind of in the process of circling around it. Uh, are you guys, like, saying anything to each other? Are you, like, making hands? What are you guys, like, how are you guys sort of arranging yourselves in this moment? Okay, I uh, got to ask, is there anything that is about 10 feet in size around? Um... There is a 10-foot pole, which isn't just convenient. Uh, you can see kind of across the treasure. I don't know if you're familiar with the 10-foot 10 10 foot pole. Uh, it is a common adventuring item that people use to check for traps and stuff. Uh, so you can see that is kind of like sticking up out of the uh, the kind of mountains of gold a, a little while away, perhaps the, uh, the remains of an adventurer who's tried to test this space before. Uh... The reason why I'm asking is because I have a light cantrip and I have hellish resistance, which makes me even part. Um, you can see uh, oh, the light cantrip. Uh, there's a lot of objects around here. There's a lot of stuff you can use for light. Uh, you can use an item in your possession. You could also just pick up like a golden coin uh, and, and make light shine from that as well if you wanted. Uh, yeah, because like Deadly Massacre can't actually, uh, if I understood well, doesn't have dark vision like the rest of us so that would be well another thing i'll say is as you're coming into now uh you kind of moved through this first chunk of the cave but now that you're coming into this space uh there is a little bit of lighting maybe it's just the glow of some of these magical items but it's it's very dim but you're able to kind of faintly make out some of this stuff um but uh I... you can still uh but the light would certainly improve that situation if you want to uh bring a light into the chamber Okay, so first I'll ask the team, guys, what do you think, how we should put Well, I, I can't see, so how am I supposed to know what's going on? I only hear his breathing. Who's breathing on me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and the breath, yeah, the breath you can definitely clearly hear, uh, and occasionally as the... Uh, one thing you are starting to notice, I think, now that you've been here for a couple moments and, and are kind of sneaking along the edge, um, you are starting to notice just the heaving of the treasure pile in the middle. And one thing also, this dragon is big. Uh, dragons are a force to be reckoned with, but this is truly what looks to be an ancient green dragon. Its size fills up almost the entire cave, gargantuan in nature. Okay, so, uh, I would use the light on the... Um, Alright, so you kind of conjure this, uh, this mode of light into existence, uh, and as you do so, um, as you kind of like, are, you're going for the 10-foot pole? Yes. Uh, you now have this kind of, essentially a staff that's glowing in your hand, uh, that begins to illuminate the chamber. Uh, and as you do this, uh, there is a sudden shifting of coins from beneath you as uh, I think this is the exact moment in which, uh, in Cleo Twilino, uh, you kind of stumble a little bit 
and your stealth is is sort of suddenly blown uh, as a big pile of coins kind of clatters like a goblet rolls a little bit and hits into the stone edge of the cave and you just hear it kind of echo through the space for a moment and a single eye at the edge of the uh, kind of on the side of the dragon's face opens and you are able to see that very clearly uh, deadly uh deadly massacre because it kind of glows with this green light behind it uh, and as the dragon kind of rears up you just hear kind of a low voice ah I've been brought dinner and it starts to kind of shift and move within its treasure not yet revealing itself what do you all do brought dinner what are you talking about <laughs> um and and the dragon kind of rumbles underneath the uh, uh, underneath the kind of hoard of treasures as it's kind of like slinking through it at the moment. Ah, uh, you didn't even know what you are. Of course I'm not. I don't know who you are. Who are you? Because I don't know who you are. My name will mean nothing to you, for you'll be gone in just a second uh, and a threat with which you are very familiar deadly massacre uh, as this very old and ancient creature is starting to kind of move up towards you and you see it begins to like rear uh, itself back uh, on its uh, kind of uh, towards its full stature as it's sitting more upright amongst the treasure gold is kind of falling off of its wings to the side uh, as it's looking down at all of you do any of you have any last words? In the name of Bartholomew, cease your threats. We are here to talk. Uh, and uh, he kind of uh, he kind of like thinks for some time. I'd like you to make me a persuasion, uh, persuasion or whatever you think it is, persuasion or intimidation, because you kind of are invoking like a being powerful enough to match him in order to. Uh, convince him and oh, no. uh, the dragon at this point kind of calls out it's fine I like it when my food puts up a bit of a fight uh, and the dragon kind of rears back and you see it suddenly hashes neck out towards you this will be your final moments please enjoy them and it begins to lunge forward as it's going to strike out at you. And as it does, farewell! <coughs> it begins to make, like, a coughing sound. <coughs> and it makes these horrible, horrible noises. And then blows out of its, uh, it blows out of its kind of stomach just this horrible cloud of this gas that you've been seeing it breathe out this whole time this dragon's breath is absolutely terrible uh, and as the dragon is kind of like rearing back he's kind of like catching his composer it seems like that cough like and that like heaving looked almost like he was going to throw up kind of like took a lot out of him and kind of like collapses to the ground relax for a moment um, and looks uh, you see him look down like a little bit, uh, a little bit like ashamed at this point, as he's kind of like collecting himself on his pile of treasure and just seems like completely exhausted and barely able to move. Um, what was that? Are, are you all right, man? I'm, I'm fine. I am a. I have lived for millennia. I do not mean to be pitied by the. <laughs> uh, seems to be having a lot of trouble. Um, wait, wait, does anyone want to do something? Because um, I'm not quite sure. This is a bit of a dangerous situation because we could uh, uh, all be eaten alive, and I generally don't think people want that. And he kind of like is looking at you. Don't flatter yourself. You're all skin and bones anyway. Are you skin and bones? Uh, I imagine cats, uh, tabaxi probably aren't great eating on a dragon scale. Who prefers like full cows? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just like, a, I'm not like a tall cat, man. It's like, uh, my, my domestic brethren are kind of, it's, it's kind of sad. Uh, 
We're, we're a lot of good eating there. I uh, look so. I think it was. Uh, I don't know. There was a. I ate most of a dungeon. There was a lot of adventurers in there, and uh, they were fighting some. They were fighting some slimes and some oozes, and I think some of it got in. I've been having indigestion for days. I can't seem to get rid of the thing. Imagine. A mighty dragon like myself, dung in by a stomach virus. <sighs> and he brings out, and there's just more of this, like, terrible breath that's emanating from him uh, as he's just there, kind of, like, heaving over on the ground. Um, what do you guys, what do you guys do? I I'm know gonna... it. You go ahead. I'm gonna drop a bucket of water on you, you. <laughs> You're just gonna go dump a bucket of water on him? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you getting your bucket of water? Did you bring a bucket of water with you? Yeah. Alright, you go over to him and, and you have a bucket of water. You have, like, you know, a bucket and then your water skin, which you empty out into it. Uh, and you go over and just pour... Uh, where are you pouring the water on him? Straight on his face. Uh, straight into his, uh, where? To his head. Uh, okay, yeah, you just kind of dump the water on its head, uh, and as you're getting closer, his head is significantly larger than your entire body, uh, and so, uh, almost his, like, uh, his eye is almost your size to, again, kind of show you the scale of this dragon, but you go over and just pour this water on him, uh, and he kind of looks at you as you get closer, and he kind of, like, does a half-hearted snap and a bite towards you, uh, but he just gets a bunch of, like, treasure and gold coins in his mouth as he does that, and kind of, like, <laughs> begins, like, kind of spitting them out onto the ground, and, why did you do that? Was that some because kind you... of... Was that some kind of poison or, or holy water? What have you done to me? You need to cool off. Oh. Well, um... Well, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and he looks over the group of you. Um, I don't suppose any of you um, have the power to cure diseases for ancient creatures of unknown origin. Not any mystic power, but I do happen to know a thing or two about common illnesses. I, um, uh, I don't know if this is a common illness by any means. So if you're here to just loot my horde, what are you doing here, anyway? Well, um, my good sir, we were sent by Bartholomew, uh, he, he kind of smells, but otherwise, it's not as bad as smell as, I mean, uh, uh, don't, don't worry about that, uh, uh, shit. A anyway, we came from more... <laughs> uh, just, just, just to help, yeah. Yeah, help, yeah, 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 sure. To help me, Bartholomew, the wizard, sent you to help me. Oh, yeah, he, he said you were a, a good long-time friend. We aren't even getting paid for this, it's just like a checkup. I would Excuse like you to make me a deception check. <laughs> because that is some, that is some absolute, uh, horseshit. Eighteen, all right. Um, he kind of looks at you and he, he's, he's suspicious, but he's kind of thinking, so you're working for me. I, I guess you could say that, yes. Uh, just like doctors or something else like that. I, we didn't have any on the ship, but... Does he want I brought you a toothbrush. Uh, <laughs> you hold out a toothbrush, uh, and you kind of look at the toothbrush that you have, and you kind of hold it out towards him, and it's... You know, it's a humanoid-sized toothbrush. Uh, and he looks kind of back at you and goes, I don't think that's going to... And he kind of bears, uh, bears his teeth, and you can see just rows and rows of sharp, pointed fangs uh, on any side of him. I don't think that's going to quite do it. Although, having my teeth cleaned would certainly make me feel a little bit better. It's... Again, I think it's it's something I ate. If you're working for me, uh, I can still 
you know, it, it may just be the illness, but I feel like I can still move, feel moving around in there. I'll try not to breathe any poison if you want to just go in and pull it out. Deal with whatever it is. Guys, I think this is a bad idea, but just listen to me anyway. I think we can just push his stomach so that I can make him go out either the back end or the front end, and we'll do it that way. Um, he kind of... He's kind of like, you see him go a little bit wide-eyed, but he looks a little too weak to resist at the moment. Uh, and goes, I don't know. I thought it would be better if... Uh, I thought it would be better if you just kind of went inside my stomach and then you could kill what was ever in there and then I could just digest you afterwards. Um, as you are Bartholomew Adventures, you just resurrect anyway, don't you? You know, I, I think we would... I, th I think we would all like not to be uh, subjected to stomach acid. I think that's just. Are, you, are you working for me or are you not? Well, you know, it, it's more like a volunteer thing. It's this we're is... kind of for you. I don't require your. <laughs> would you mind uh, opening your ma and going? Ah, uh, I'd like uh, to check something real quick. Uh, and he kind of goes into another coughing fit for a moment. You all have to, like, cover your mouth as more of this terrible, like, noxious gas comes out, uh, and he kind of just uh, have it your way, and following your instructions, he kind of rolls over onto his belly and just kind of leans backwards, uh, as you had kind of implied that you wanted him to do before Deadly Massacre, and then he opens his mouth and just goes <sighs> and as he does, just waves and waves of toxic fumes like true poison gas uh, just pours out the uh, the dragon's like deadly breath weapon uh, and he just kind of directs it down the cave where it shoots out and beyond, uh, dissipating probably before it reaches the village but another terrible dose of his bad breath uh, but he's opening his mouth and um, you can uh, you can look inside if you'd like uh, I would like to do that, I'd like to not not crawl into his mouth, but like stick my head in there and see if I notice any uh, immediate signs of infection. I have a suggestion. So, Deadly Massacre, you don't want to go through his mouth because it stings and you're going to die of bad breath. So, why don't you go in from the other side? From uh, I can totally do that. As soon as you say that, the dragon over here is, I have limits. Nope. There's there's certain lines I'm not going to cross, uh, and um, but you're looking in his mouth, Aminor. Go ahead and make me a medicine check. Uh, seven. You're looking around. Um, it's it's tough. Uh, it, it's tough to say. Um, the inside of his mouth. I I mean, it's definitely like corroded in places just from like the dragon's own poison and the influence that that has on it. Uh, but those are kind of like burnt, um, kind of like stains and stuff. What you're also seeing is a more like acidic corrosion, um, where it looks like whatever this dragon ate, he mentioned he had kind of raided that dungeon, it looks like whatever this dragon ate, um, like just did some damage. Uh, there are like wounds and stuff on the inside of his mouth that are definitely a little bit festering and, and, and becoming infected. Um, not the source of the problem, but probably the source of, like, the bad breath and would need to be treated, but couldn't be done until, like, whatever that source is is, is dealt with. Um, but you're unable to, like, glean anything beyond that from, from just a seven, like, how to do it or anything like that. Or what caused it. Uh, but that's what you get, Minora. Do you ever eat anything non-carnivorous? Um, well, as I, uh, I had mentioned before, there were um, some... Like I said, I think they were jellies or oozes or something. Um, they were fighting adventurers, so it was just sort of a two-for-one deal, and I thought they might taste good in the jelly. Adventurer and jelly sandwich, so to speak, but a sentient jelly does not taste as good as a prepared jelly. Mm. 
but have you considered eating some uh, greens? Like maybe a large salad, something to balance out that. I eat, tr- I eat trees every once in a while. Why don't you just become full on vegetarian? <laughs> this one has a bold sense of humor. If I was feeling better, I would have killed you for that. Well, you can kill me, because I'm the only one that you can kill. Wait. So I can I can eat you? Yes, but with the exception that I have, of I have to fight you first. Um... He kind of looks at you, uh, he kind of, like, was rolling over on his stomach a, a little bit, just kind of, like, going belly up for you guys to, to look at him, but he kind of rolls back over and he goes, I don't know how much fight I'm going to be, but we can have a fight if you would like. Yes, let's do an arm wrestle. <laughs> All I'm right. not sure this is such a good idea. Uh, I have better idea. Let's do tongue wrestle. Uh... The dragon kind of, like, feebly holds up a single claw. Uh, the claw part of it is razor sharp and also big enough that it takes, like, both of your hands to kind of, like, wrap around and uh, uh, and get ready for an arm wrestle. So he's kind of... He's doing a thumb war and you're just wrestling. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have a question. Can I use my uh, precision skills to make uh, dragon basically... Lose on put uh just kind of like cough up the ooze um yeah you could um i i mean he seemed kind of open to the idea when uh maybe not initially but after like having another coughing fit he seemed kind of open to that idea already it would be more an issue of, of how to get him like you might have to like hit him in the stomach pretty good with something or or find some other way uh, to get him to cough it up because he's been trying to to no avail it sounds like Okay, I mostly have fire abilities, so I don't think that's going to be effective against Uh, you never know. Um, whatever you have. Uh, go ahead and make me a strength check while you try and uh, arm wrestle this dragon, Deadly. Deadly Massacre, I apologize. Uh, strength check. Why can't I see that? Uh, the dragon has, um, disadvantage, but is also an ancient green dragon. Um... It's like, he is, uh, I'm going to give him triple disadvantage for his illness. Uh, so he got an 11. Hey, you actually win! Uh, he kind of holds up, uh, uh kind of holds up a single claw, uh, and you just kind of slowly force it to the ground. You can hear him kind of just in his sickness kind of moaning like, until you crash it onto the coins below, having bested this ancient green dragon in a contest of strength. Ha! Huh. I knew I could beat you. <laughs> I am from the family of Sass Masters. You can't beat us. I would like to use my uh, dagger, if I could, and use it to get part of piece of its from inside of its mouth. For... Oh, you want to try and get a tooth? Yeah. Uh, oh yes, for the village chief, of course. Um, all right, so you kind of climb. Are you actually climbing into his mouth? I have wings, so I can like use the wings to get. Um, all right, uh, and um, you go uh, and kind of climb up to his mouth. Uh, and and how do you gesture? Because his mouth's like closed right now, and you just ask him to say ah again. Yes. All right, he kind of <laughs> says ah. You wait for the puff of noxious gas to go past you uh, and then you uh, walk up and kind of hop into his mouth uh, and he goes all right I guess I'll, I'll I'll swallow you now so you can go and uh, deal with whatever is moving around in there uh, and he goes to like close his mouth over you while he's uh, while you're now in there uh, you guys all see this starting to happen uh, go ahead and make me a slate of hand check to try and grab a tooth that's not going to be uh, it's not gonna be easy uh, Oh, um, so you kind of reach up and, and go to kind of grab onto one of them. And as soon as you touch it, it looks like it's just sore from the sickness. Uh, and the dragon immediately just roars again and lets out a howl of pain. I need you to, um, 
his whole mouth is 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 just messed up. I need you to uh, make me a Constitution saving throw as another puff of that gas comes out while you're directly in his mouth. Twelve is unfortunately not going to cut it for this particular effect. Uh, you have like the gas mask on, and this isn't just his poison breath, but just even this kind of like subset of it. Um, you are going to take uh, four points of just po four points of poison damage uh, as this breath just <laughs> washes over you in this moment. Uh, yeah, you guys all see this happen to uh, uh, your ally as he's uh, in the mouth. There happens to Azarian. Azarian, give me, give me the dagger. Okay, uh, how do I do that? I, I have, I have, a uh, what is it? I have proficiency in simple weapons, so I can, I should be able to do that, right? Uh, okay, can I, like, just throw a dagger to a uh, deadly massacre and use the shield to prevent damage from myself from the other? Um... I mean, that's probably uh, not going to help you all that much, but the dragon is starting to get kind of frustrated. Uh, as you hop into his mouth, um, he, he kind of... Uh, he, he kind of just this time actually, like, shuts the mouth down on both of you, uh, and you see he just kind of... Uh, begins to kind of move his head back while you're in there. Uh, and he just goes, just take care of it! Uh, and goes to kind of, like, toss you back. Uh, I need both of you to make me strength saving throws. Uh, oh, uh, both of you succeed. You see the, um, uh, both of you on the outside, uh, Incleo and Minoru, you see them kind of hop in the mouth, going after a tooth again, sort of in vain here. Uh, and the, uh, the dragon kind of just shuts his mouth over them and throws his head back. Uh, and then you see, as he does, he goes to, like, bleh, kind of gulp them down, but they're just, uh, as he opens his mouth, he just kind of, like, looks a little bit confused, and then you can see both of them, like, hanging on to teeth on the inside of the dragon's mouth, uh, as they're just kind of, like, waggling back and forth in the air, not quite, uh, going down the, uh, the gullet. Uh, and he just goes, just go in! Uh, and is kind of like frustratedly shaking his head back and forth, but you guys are holding on pretty firm. What are your um, Incleo and, and Minoru doing on the outside right now? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of traumatized by watching uh, two of my friends get uh, swallowed alive. I have no idea how they're living at this very moment. That's kind of scary. Not, not swallowed alive yet. <laughs> they're holding on. All right, well, then it's not so traumatic. Um, uh, Tororo, I think it was. Do uh, you know that 10-foot pole we saw earlier? Uh, it's, it's laid on the ground where it was left. Um, it's okay, about... guys. I'll just make my home over here. I'll live inside his mouth. Alright, um, we should probably prop up his mouth with that ten-foot pole so he can't swallow us. I think that would be a generally good idea. Yes. I think he would probably be able to snap it. No, I, have I, won't, be able, but... I won't be able to. Prop open my mouth with a ten-foot pole. It's you know, you know, he's a, he's a pretty trustworthy dra uh, dragon. I, I I think it'll be fine. You know, just he is a strangely trustworthy dragon. Yeah, yeah. I'm not usually this trustworthy. Don't. Um. Uh. He kind of like looks embarrassed about that. Actually. Well, well, you know, I think I think you have to work on that, man. Uh, but otherwise, I'm gonna pick up that ten-foot pole and just try to prop up his mouth with it. I will help him. Um, all right. He goes, I'm just... All right, I'm gonna make a deal with all of you. I'll open my mouth. You don't need to put a ten-foot pole in, because I can just open my mouth wider than ten feet. Um, but when you're done, you can go in my stomach, deal with whatever's going on in there. And then when you come back out, I'll just open my mouth. You can kind of knock on the inside of my teeth, and uh, we'll we'll just let you right back out. How does that sound? We need to take a tooth sample for research purposes. I still want to kill something. Mm. Oh yes, um, I, I have to say Bartholomew did ask us to send a, a tooth sample to him after we're done volunteering, so he. You can try to cure disease faster. He's uh, he's very he's uh, very trustworthy. I have to say, just Minoru, like you, 
make me a deception check with advantage because of the help of uh, because of the help of your ally here in Cleo. Seventeen. And he looks at you and he goes, "Tooth sample. I did have one of these that were a little bit." Uh, and he starts kind of like jiggling with it, and he goes, "I'll try and get it out by the time you get back." All right. And as uh, Minerva says that, he'll bring up two fingers to his mouth and whistle. And these two completely harmless-looking, unarmed office worker type individuals will run up wearing the other <laughs> masks that he bought. What the hell? Um, oh, well. Uh, these entities are going to count as one individual for the purposes of having one summon in D&D time. That is fair. Um, the only thing that Minerva will do is ask that if us four adventurers don't make it out of the dragon's mouth to run the tooth down to the village. Um, the, uh, the, the two retainers kind of look up at you. They look at the dragon. Uh, they look very loyal uh, and very scared. They're like, I have to do this because you're the one that's going to save our clan, but I'm not crazy about it. It's kind of the vibe that you get. Um, but they all, of course, agree, and they will act as you have told them. Uh, I have a suggestion. One should stay outside and make sure that Dragon uh, follows his uh, part of the deal. Does yeah, I think that's what um, he was doing. Actually, all three of them stayed outside and doing that. Or all, or both of them, rather. Um, so, yeah, uh, you guys kind of all... Uh, get yourself. He lets you down from where he was just trying to get you, un catch you unawares, uh, and then opens his mouth wide for all of you to just hop right in. Well, Trusty Worthy Dragon, we'll be right out in about some time. I don't know. We may get lost in there. Uh, do you have a map by any chance? No, but I'll be able to tell where you are, and I'll try and shout instructions. All right. Well. I don't think we have anything further to dilly dally and pilly pally. You know, we should just go in, kill this whatever is inside, or maybe take it out. I don't know. When I what do you guys say? When I kill the thing, vomit me out, and you can't digest that I massacre. Oh, hell no. All right. Uh, and he kind of nods and opens his mouth ah, and gets ready for all of you to hop in. All right, let's go in. All right. <clears throat> let's um, make some new regrets. <laughs> you guys walk into the dragon's mouth, uh, and he just kind of leans back and, and uh, gulps you all down, and you all have kind of a like a very short and fun ride on a slide, almost, uh, as you <laughs> move down into, uh, into the dragon's insides. And as you kind of hop into what must be the dragon's stomach, uh, the space in here is is cavernous and and very big. Uh, you can both cavernous and very big, so you know it's large. Uh, you kind of look around. It is completely pitch black in here, but I imagine again with the uh, the help of of your uh, your light spells, Arian, as you kind of ignite that once more. Do you do that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. As you ignite that once more in the space. Uh, you can see around you, this dragon's diet is obviously abysmal. Uh, you can see bits of what looked like just, like, chunks of buildings and, like, sides of ships that he's swallowed. Uh, you can definitely see a lot of bones that are still in the process of uh, being digested. He hasn't quite worked through yet. Obviously, all of the flesh already kind of having melted away. Um, you're currently standing on a little bit of a... a, a pile of debris that has kind of uh, come together in his stomach, what looks like the top of like a ruin and a piece of what maybe was like a catapult from some siege or something that he did at one point. Uh, but some of this like debris is stacked up so you're not directly in stomach acid. Uh, all of you make me perception checks. Um... Uh... Let's 
So, Minoru, uh, with your dark vision and kind of the help of the aid of the light here, kind of stretching that a bit beyond, uh, you can see something kind of uh, moving around and kind of uh, just living in the space. And, and you're not really sure how anything could live in this space until you kind of identify the amorphous figure of what looks like an ooze. Uh, and this ooze seems to be not only living, but thriving. It is very big uh, and growing on all of the acid that it seems to be absorbing from the dragon's stomach down here. Uh, and it's just kind of like, and kind of moving around. You see it's kind of like climbing up the sides of the inside of like the dragon's stomach lining uh, and like singes it. And as it does, you can hear another, another coughing fit and... Um, kind of some of the other uh, insides you, you get thrown about and shaken a little bit but you see this creature that's like just tearing up the inside of this dragon well time to kill something i guess uh yeah what do you all do the that? creature Everyone? is just kind of uh sh would you guys like to make a plan or should we just charge in true musketeer fashion i guess can it can it see us it doesn't seem to have noticed you at the moment. It's just kind of doing its own thing over on the side of the stomach. Well, I say let's go and stealthily, and if it catches us, then we charge. Um, all right. Uh, I mean, it's definitely uh, close. Uh, go ahead. If you want to make stealth checks, all of you, you're welcome to do so. Uh, one thing also is you're going to have to walk through stomach acid to get over to where it is. Are you guys comfortable with walking into stomach acid? <laughs> Ooh. Yes, as long as it doesn't hurt me. All right, as soon as you step down uh, and you start walking through the stomach acid, it's burning your it's burning about your ankles. Uh, you'll you take a damage uh, and you will take one damage for each round that you're walking through the stomach acid. Oh, 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 oh crap! But, you're, but you are all able to. But you are all able to sneak up if you want to. It will take two rounds. So to sneak up on it, you'll all take two points of damage. But you all rolled really well on that stealth, so you'll definitely be able to. I'm gonna say to my team, "What do you want to do, guys? Do you want to go stealthfully, or do you want to do something else?" I just want to kill something. I don't care. Um. <laughs> I think I should be good. We could probably make it there, not get our legs fried off by draconic stomach acid, and uh, make it back out, hopefully alive. Okay, I have a better idea. What if Deadly Massacre eats the ooze instead? Uh, that would be impossible. You can tell by the size of it and the size of Deadly Massacre that that would not be physically possible. I would like to just... Do a quick little magic before we step over there. Uh, what do you do? Hmm. Uh, you have temporarily fortified yourself for five points of temporary hit points. As you cast the ball flight spell. Um, Alright, what, uh, what's the play? The ooze at this point? Um, Hasn't noticed you yet, but it's starting to move in your direction. Just seemingly aim, just aimless. We should be not terribly slow. That way, we don't have to fight it while in the acid. It's getting kind of closer, uh, and you imagine if this thing could see, it's going to be coming into a space soon where you would lose the element of surprise if you don't act. It's about one round away from. Uh, you guys running out to it if you want to go into the stomach acid. I will go. Uh, do you want to try and, and sneak up on it still, or are you going to... Uh... I think we need to go with a plan of attack. All right. Then who uh, who takes action? Who, who, who springs in? Mm. Okay, I will uh... rush in if nobody else will. Um... All right. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go with uh, Tororo, actually. We'll, we'll double attack or something, I don't know. Uh, both of you gonna run run in through the acid, or just trying to throw stuff at it from the platform? Through the acid. 
through the acid, yeah. All right, you guys dive forward. I would like you to roll for initiative. Uh, all, all of y'all. Just a second, I need time to find it. Um, uh, I don't know where that is. Above the hit points, next yep. to the armor class, on the core. Wow, stomach bug rolled really well. Um, yeah, right in the top middle. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, do you see where your hit points are? I think you uh... got it. Oh, yeah, oh it's just, already, it's already yeah. up. Oh, I just didn't see it. My apologies. Oh, wow, you guys all did really good on initiative. So, uh, in this case, you guys still have the elements of surprise since you're charging it. Uh, and the two of you run out. So the first to act is going to be... All of you get a, You guys have a surprise round. Uh, so that's going to bring us first to uh, Inclio. What would you like to do? All right, so um, how far away is this thing? Um, it's, it's about... Uh, it's about 15 feet away, but it's difficult terrain for you, so... Oh yeah, I could, I could definitely get through there, so, uh... Yeah, I'll just, I'll try to sprint up to it. Alright, you run and kind of the acid begins to splash, you feel it begin to burn about your ankles as you kind of charge in bravely here. That's rather painful, I gotta say. Uh, go ahead and, um... Do what you're gonna do, you're gonna make an attack roll? Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna try to stab it. All right, strike with advantage. You are an unseen at this moment attacker. Critical hit! Oh my goodness! Uh, roll damage on that. All right. Nice. Uh, Fourteen points of piercing damage. Uh, you just kind of uh, jiggles, and a bunch of the uh, the jelly as you stab into it, you see it just kind of like kind of splatters outwards behind it as you take a huge chunk of this thing away in a single swing. Uh, a very strong opening strike. Um, is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn? Uh, I'm gonna give Tororu uh, Bardic Inspiration, actually. Excellent. Use your bonus action and inspire your yes. ally here. Uh, and I believe that is going to bring us to... Actually, no, that's gonna bring us to Azarion. What would you like to do, Azarion? Okay, uh, could I use my burning hands and Uh Which ability are you doing? Uh, burning hands. Uh, I'm not familiar with it. Um, what what does that do? Oh, burning uh, burning hands. Yes. Um, never mind. Uh, so the creature's gonna make a dexterity saving throw, right? Um, if you wouldn't mind uh, clicking on the burning hand hen spell on the front page there, uh, so it pops up. Uh, all right, so they're gonna make a dexterity saving throw or suffer six points of damage or half as much either way And you know what they say about oozes is that they're incredibly dexterous. He has a minus two. Oh wow Yeah, he rolls pretty well, but I assume that doesn't match your uh, what is your spell saving DC? Um, where is it? Uh, it's on your character sheet on the Spell side at the top. I'm looking at it now. It's in the top middle of your spell section of your character sheet, it's a 13 for you, which means he fails, he rolled below the number. Uh, and the ooze is going to take uh, six points of fire damage as you uh, the fire kind of courses out through the space. At the end of your turn for being in the acid, you take one damage, as did you um, as did you and Cleo, by the way. One point of acid damage. <laughs> as you're being dissolved. Uh, and yeah, fire goes over, the, spreads over the form of this ooze, and it kind of jiggles and wiggles around. Uh, but is is still holding on. Uh, you're burning some of it's boiling on the inside. As we move next in initiative two, now it is Minoru. What would you like to do, Minoru? Going to go ahead and uh, run across the acid to get close to the ooze with a uh, um. bonus action engaging my blade. Ooh. Uh, you begin Blaine singing. Uh, very cool. Uh, and go ahead and make me an attack roll. Ok. 
20 is absolutely going to hit. Uh, roll damage on that. Six points of lightning damage. Uh, uh, it begins to kind of shock and, and, and kind of rattle a little bit, and the ooze is, is, is getting a little bit smaller. It's almost seeming to be having like a hard time keeping itself together uh, as it's taking all of this damage and this sudden impact uh, as it's like uh, bits of it are kind of flying across the space uh, and it's lit up with electricity. Uh, you also cannot take reactions uh, for what an ooze can do on a reaction. Anything else on your turn? That is everything. All right, that's going to bring us next. Um, uh, you take one point of damage at the end of your turn. Uh, that is going to bring us to you, Deadly. Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, oh, boy. Um, I'm going to do the chill touch. All right. Uh, chill touch is unfortunately a five... Uh, is going to miss, which it's a little tough to miss a uh, an ooze, but uh, but it does miss uh, as you go and kind of like conjure this necrotic hand over near it, uh, as Chill Touch is wont to do. Uh, it doesn't quite seem able to find purchase or absorb any of the uh, the life energy there. In, um, but you also are from a range, so you did not have to run up and into the uh, into the ooze and the uh, space to do this. So you don't take any damage. So that's good. Uh, is there anything else on your turn, Deadly? Um, no, but I wanted to ask if I still had that dagger from... Yeah, I'll say you still have that, absolutely. Okay, okay, cool. Um, in that case, that's going to bring us to the top of the initiative again. It is no longer a surprise round for this ooze. Um, it's back around to you, Incleo. All right, well, uh, I'm just going to... The first round seemed to have some good, uh, good results, so I'm just going to do the same thing. Uh, do it up. 19, um, you are on fire. Go ahead and roll damage on that. Nine points of piercing damage. You stab into it, and another large chunk of the ooze comes flying out. And this time, as you strike it, the ooze was having a little bit of a hard time, like, keeping its form together. And with this strike, uh, you just cleave straight through it, and then you watch the ooze just kind of flop into now two discrete oozes as it's been split in half. Uh, and there are now two smaller oozes in front of you. Uh, I must say, this does seem to be a problem. Uh, anything else on your turn? Um, no, that should be it. Uh, in that case, that's going to bring us next in initiative to... Azarion. Uh, actually, at the end of your turn, you take a damage. Uh, Azarion, what would you like to do? Okay, I'm wondering if I could use my uh, warding flare to interpose divine light between myself and... Uh, you can um, attempt to do so, certainly. Um, so, are you going to do that? How does a yes. blinding flare work? Is it a bonus action or is it an action to do that? It's a class, so <laughs> like, I don't really know. Uh, it's uh... You can use um... this picture a number of times equal to your visual modifier. Uh, unit or so when attacked. Um, oh, so this is when when the ooze attacks you. You can only use that when someone attacks you. You can try and f blind it with light. So you can't use that proactively. You can only use it reactively. Uh, uh, is the way blinding flare works. So you'll have to uh, pick a different ability. Okay. Uh, I'm. I don't have much options, so I guess I'm gonna go with the uh, burning hands. Yeah, level one doesn't give you a ton of tools, but. Uh, that's why you gotta get experience. Uh, Alright, you're gonna do Burning Hands again. The Ooze is going to make a... Um, it's actually really good here because it covers a, a wider area, so you can get both of them with this, if you so desire, which I assume you do. And it fails this time. Uh, or actually, it failed last time, too. So it's gonna take full eight points of fire damage to both of these smaller Oozes, which ignite and continue to bubble and boil even more fiercely than they did the first time. Maybe the smaller concentration is stronger as the fire shoots out from Azarian's hands. Uh, and yeah, you did 16 total damage, a pretty powerful round against this creature, but these two smaller oozes are still holding up as it's getting to Minoru's turn. It's still not their turn yet. Minoru, what would you like to do? And you take a damage at the end of your turn, Azarion, for being in the acid. 
What's the play, Minora? Alright, uh, I would like to cast a mirror image this turn. Um, ooh. Um, you guys see as, or just, is there anything special about your mirror image, or does it kind of, as the spell describes it, or is there something unique about Minora's particularly? This one, he performs pretty faithfully to the the standard spell. His uh, form initially blurring until it's splitting into multiple iterations of himself. Yes, Minoru uh, creates this field of illusion. Uh, and uh, are you going to, like, move or, or do anything else on your turn, or is that all you're doing? I'd like to move closer to the two oozes. Uh, you were already kind of like up near them because you had. Um, uh, well, you had I, a, I mean, I want to be right next to both of them if uh, I'm not. Attack them. Yeah, you could get like in between them, if you will. That's perfect. Excellent. Uh, and the uh, the oozes, there's now four Minoros that you can see, and they're all moving in like kind of disorienting manners around either side of these oozes. Um, but unfortunately, Minoru. These oozes have blind sight. Uh, so they are unable to even perceive your illusion. Um, I don't know, unless there's another effect that, that. I don't know how this interacts with that. That's what makes. Oh, yeah, okay, I thought that was. Um, um, such as blind sight. So the creature is unaffected by the spell. And these two oozes on either side of you. Um, actually, one of them is going to attack at you. Uh, and that's a 12 to hit. Does a 12 get you, Minoru? It does not. Okay, uh, and then the other one is going to... Actually, the other one's just also going to go after you, but that's a 6, which also misses. Uh, so, Minoru, you summon these illusions, and the oozes start going after you, and you see them just kind of harmlessly, like, passing through, uh, passing through your illusions, and you're like, excellent spell, everything is working out as intended. <laughs> Um, and uh, that is all for the Ooze's turn at this point. Uh, that's all they can do. That was a rough round for them. Uh, as we move next in the initiative to uh, Deadly Massacre. Hmm. Could I use command uh, to kill, or I guess <laughs> for the Ooze to kill the other Ooze so that they're attacking each other? Uh, the command does not quite have that breadth. Uh, also, I, does command have an intelligence cap that it can affect? Or okay, intelligence minimum? Uh... I'll tell you right now, you're pretty sure these oozes are real dumb. Like, they don't understand words. It said the target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or follow the command on it on its next turn. I just, I think they have to be able to understand the language. You guys are dealing, uh, you guys are underestimating just how dumb these oozes and, uh, are. Okay. Um, then I'll do. Hmm. I'm gonna do poison spray then. All right, that certainly you can do. Uh, go ahead, and they're gonna make Constitution saving throws. Um, or poison spray just affects one of them, right? Uh, creature you can see within range. Okay, yeah. So you do poison, and actually they're very. They've been absorbing a lot of the acid, but they don't have an inherent resistance to poison specifically. They've just been surviving on this acid. So your poison does hurt them, as uh, you see the ooze just kind of like shrivels up a little bit uh, as it's exposed to this thing, and it's trying to like absorb more of the acid from below, but it can nowhere near keep up at the rate at which you're poison spraying it as it blasts from Deadly Massacre's hands. Um, is there anything else on your turn, Deadly Massacre? Nice poison spray. I'm gonna say, ha, gotcha. And then I'm going to <laughs> The ooze responds with... Which you're pretty sure it felt humiliated by the way in which it was got. Uh, as we move next to the top of the initiative, which is you once more in Cleo. All right, so um, these oozes are next to each other, right? Or are they apart? Um, the oozes are uh, right. Uh, they're on either side of Minoru, so they got a five foot gap between them. Am I next to one of the oozes? Yeah, you can be. You yeah, you split them in half, so you're next to one of them certainly. 
Okay, uh, I'm gonna move up to one that's beside Minoru, and I'm gonna cast, uh, Dissonant Whispers. Uh, I, I'm sorry this keeps happening, but I- is that another spell that they have to be able to under- Actually, no, I think Dissonant Whispers doesn't have an intelligence cap on it. So I think they just make a save, right? Uh, yeah. Um, what do they, uh... Uh, it's a wisdom save, I believe. Wisdom saving throw. These oozes are really wise. Oh shit, they actually are! Uh, they take, uh, it takes half damage, right? Uh, yes, and it doesn't have to use its reaction to run. Alright, so it does not use its reaction to run, but seven, uh, from the fire damage before, um... Fire damage before from Azarion combined with this psychic damage. The ooze, you see... Somewhere deep inside its barely sentient brain, uh, the ooze just kind of... They're just very confused and very down on themselves right now, uh, as they just kind of uh, split uh, in two once more. And now there's two very small oozes and one medium ooze, uh, as you have uh, caused their brain to split in half. Well, you know, uh, it had to happen eventually, man. That is oh, yeah. Fair also, uh, I'm gonna just cast a uh, healing word on myself really quick. All right. As, uh, as always, one damage. Uh, as we move next initiative back around to you, Azarian. What would you like to do, Azarian? First, I'm going to say to users, depression is okay. You can get to it. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> then I'm going to go second place. Uh, go ahead and, uh... Uh, oh, they're gonna make another dexterity saving throw. You're really hitting them in their weak spot on this one. They rolled a zero. Uh, so they're going to take five radiant damage. Are you going after one of the small ones, or yes. one of the medium ones? Small ones. Alright, one of the small ones takes five points of radiant damage and squishes up as it's burning with holy fire. Uh, that one might be close to being completely defeated as we move next in initiative. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, I believe that's all you do. So it's going to move us next to initiative to, um... It is Minoru next, actually. Uh, and the ooze is definitely not quite getting over its depression from being burned with holy fire. Uh, what would you like to do? Just to be uh, clear, I'm now surrounded by three of them. You have two on your left and one on your right. The two on your left are very small, and the one on your right is medium. Perfect. <laughs> it's not a lot um, of damage, but it sounded cool. <laughs> Minoru does this flick of his sheath sword in a way where spectral swords will fly about him for a brief moment. Um, and you... It's a area of effect all around him. All right, and you watch as... <laughs> each of these spectral swords, each of them hits these oozes with, like, the flat side of the ba blade, but all of them are perfectly struck by it, as it's just like, whack, 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 on each of the oozes. Um, that's not enough to finish off any of them, unfortunately. Uh, but damage has been done. Uh, is there anything else on your turn, Minoru, as you do this very cool-looking sword burst? I really need to get more bonus action spells. <laughs> Uh, classic. All right. I mean, it's better for these oozes, and now there's four of them. Uh, as one of them's going after you, Minoru, to begin with. Oh, oh, Jesus. That's a sizable hit. Uh, is a 12 going to get you? It is, and I'm going to expend my reaction. To... Ooh! Um, so you're going to take, ha or you're going to take half from the acid damage? Yes. Um, all right, you power your acid damage. Did that save you? I'm curious. Um, a little bit. I'm still going to have to get out of here real soon. Now. All right. Um, and that is the um, that is the medium one, and then over uh, over next to uh, over next to you, uh, they're going to go after one each at. Azarius and... I'm sorry, Azarian and Inclio. Uh, and they're gonna make an attack against each of you guys. These little guys. Okay, um, can I use uh, my uh, Lord Flare this time? 
Uh, you throw up your warding flare to blind the ooze as it comes in, but you realize the ooze is already blind. Uh, they are just <laughs> seeing you based on like some kind of extrasensory vision that they have called blind sight. Uh, so the ooze is not blinded, but does a 12 hit your armor class? What's your armor class, uh, Azarian? 17. Okay, so uh, a, a warding flare goes to flash in front of the ooze, and you see it just still keeps going forward, but then as it uh, just kind of harmlessly throws a tendril at you, you just batter it aside with your shield, and it is fine. Uh, and then it crit fails against you and Cleo, so you're good to go. Um, but well, you know, I, I actually got to say that was really sad to watch. Like, I, I feel bad. Maybe she, I should just let him hit me at this point. Uh, the ooze probably agrees with you on that as we move next initiative to Deadly Massacre. The turn <laughs> is yours once more. There's two little guys and one big guy. One of the little uh, guys pre beat up, and the medium guys is also pre beat up. They're within 15 foot, right? All of each other, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yes, but if you're doing an AOE, keep in mind that also, like, all of your allies are right up in the paint, too. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> so, so, uh... it's not You could, like, if you uh... wanted to wander into the acid, you could maybe get two of them without hitting people, but you can mm -hmm. get the two little guys. Okay, yeah, if I can... Yeah, I was going to do burning hands, so I don't want to, yeah, you can, I don't you want to hurt people. Hands by the 15-foot cone. Yeah, you yeah. can burning hands, the two little ones, if you wanted to walk up. But Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll walk up. Okay. Uh, so you'll take an acid damage at the end of your turn, but they're going to make dexterity saving throws. Go ahead and roll me that burning hands damage. Well, one of them succeeds. Uh, so you seven points of fire damage is a move uh, you recognize... A technique that you yourself, Azarian, used but moments before a burning hands from Deadly Master flame and, and lash out through the space. Uh, the two, um, one of the oozes just uh, whips away into nothing as it's completely burnt up. The other one is uh, almost down to nothing, barely still holding itself together. But you have completely defeated one ooze as we move next in initiative to. Oh, sorry, did you have anything else on your turn? Um, no. All right. Uh, the ooze feels the wrath of the Sass Master as we move to the uh, the top of the initiative, which is you, Inclio. All right. Well, uh, that ooze that missed me, I'm just going to insult him for that. I'm casting a vicious mockery. Uh, the, uh, the little one? Uh, yeah, the one that literally just missed me. Uh, it's going to make another wisdom saving throw. It's gonna take four points of, um, it's gonna take four points of psychic damage, and it has taken one and then another oh, three because it succeeded. So it's not downed just yet, but it is barely hanging on and is is very sad. Uh, that ooze somehow just kind of like deflates a little bit as it's not smart enough to know that it was insulted. It just kind of knows it should feel bad right now. Uh, no idea what the insult was. Um, anything else on your turn as you make fun of this poor, poor ooze? Uh, no, that's it, actually. I'm just bullying an ooze. Um, and that's gonna bring us next to... I'm starting to feel bad for these uses as we move around to Azarian. Okay, first of all, I wonder if I could use my shield to, uh, protect myself from any additional... Um, your shield gives you a bonus to your armor class, so that's kind of always passively protecting you. But what you can do is get into, like, a defensive stance. Uh, it takes your turn to do it, uh, but then for the next round, things have disadvantage on attacks against you. It's called the dodge action, if you would like to do that. But you'd be giving up your, like, attack for the round to do that. Well, I mean, we almost beat the Uzu, so yeah, I'm going to... You're gonna just kind of tank up and get ready to receive any damage that comes in at you. Yeah, and the the loses. Try me, you little okay. Vic. Um, yeah, you kind of push yourself kind of over near where Minoru is and kind of get in the way of this big one, hoping to uh, block any hits that didn't come as you ready your shield. We move now to Minoru. What would you, you like to do, Minoru? One little one that's almost downed, and one medium one. I will... It's also almost done. Slap the larger one with a staticky hand. Get him! 
Uh, ten points of, or sorry, ten to hit. <laughs> uh, roll damage. <laughs> that hits. My Wait, what? Really? Yeah, ten. the Uzis have a big dex penalty. Uh, seven points of lightning damage. Uh, they have an armor class of eight, I will just tell you. Uh, as lightning kind of courses through, it causes the Uz once more to split into two distinct oozes. All that remain are two of the baby oozes. Uh, and also, because it was really low when you hit it, both of those oozes look like they're like one hit away. Um, and both of them are going to go after you, Azarion. Uh, and they're going to make like their to... attacks. Oh. Uh... I'm sorry, you I was also going to step away to safety at the end of that. Uh, okay, uh, that will provoke an opportunity attack from one of them. Are you cool with that? I'm fine with that. All right, it is not at disadvantage, but it will say it is. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Reaction shield. <laughs> oh, nice! Uh, you throw up a magically conjured force field in front of it, blocking the attack and pushing it aside, as now the two of them are going to make attacks with disadvantage. Uh against you, Azarion. That's a critical failure and a 15, which does not hit your armor class on either of those. Yeah, you just they kind of go and try to tendril at you with their little oozy tentacles uh, and you batter one away with the shield and the other one it goes to kind of grab onto your armor. You just kick it aside. Uh, these things can't touch you. As we move to Deadly Massacre, only two of these small oozes remain and they're already pretty weakened uh, because they were low when he transformed. Um, I'll use burning hand, hands again because I know One it's last burning hands. Work. Yeah, uh, roll the roll the damage, but odds are, oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter that these both uh, they both succeeded on their dexterity saving throw because six uh, fire damage is enough to get both of them. You see them both adeptly dodge out of the way, but then the next torrent of fire over the top just <laughs> turns both of them to ash. Ash. Well, turns both of them to ash. Uh, as they have just been completely deadly massacred. Uh, and all of the oozes in the stomach are slain. So bad, I wanted to butt slap one of them. <laughs> uh, uh, and as you say that, you can hear a deep grumbling voice reverberating from all, of her, all around you. What are you doing in there? It really hurts, whatever it is. I just feel a, a burning in my stomach. You know, not the usual one. It's awful. Sorry, sir. I didn't mean to do that, but there were oozes trying to destroy us. Oh, man, they were still in there. Did you did you deal? Did you get them? Yes, we did. All right, I'm going to lay down. Uh, and you just hear him once again kind of... Oh, but this time it's ear piercing as the sound of him going ah is just echoing all around you inside of the dragon's body as he's presumably opening his mouth for all of you guys to get out. Well, uh, that's, that's an invitation to get out. We should just uh, skedaddle then. I don't want to uh, die in a uh, stomach. All right, uh, and you guys climb up and out of the stomach acid and into the, uh, into the cavern beyond as he uh, just... <sighs> Kind of catches himself uh, a little bit exhausted as he slumps down in the uh, in the cave here. You guys finish, and he goes, "Now that you're out, I actually there's nothing moving around in there. I feel a little bit better. What was uh? It's it's gone. Whatever it is. Yeah, it is. And I'll take the dude now. By the way, I set up Wi-Fi inside his stomach before I got. Uh, and he goes, oh yes, of course. Uh, and uh, it looks like the uh, the retainers um, kind of walk over towards you, Minoru, and it looks like he had already given it to the retainers, uh, and they hand it back to you, uh, Minoru. Oh no, you two are carrying this for me. I can't lift this thing. Um, and they both just kind of solemnly nod as they know that their work day is, is not done quite yet. Uh, and they begin tarry, carrying this very large tooth uh, back towards the uh, back towards the village below. Um, as you return, um, you can see there's now that he's a little bit settled and he's not like going on these coughing sprees as much. There's maybe still a little bit as it'll take time to heal, but a lot less of this gas that's pouring out of the cave. Uh, and the uh, the old woman kind of like looks at all of you as you come up and uh, sees you carrying the tooth. 
and just goes, Oh, you returned! I thought you were just going to end up being sacrifices and that it would appease the dragon, so I thought it would be fine either way, but you actually slayed the beast. Uh, yeah, uh-huh, it's, to it's totally gone, uh-huh. Yeah, don't don't go look, it's not there anymore. Yeah, I can still see we some of those fingers must just be residuals. No, you can't. Definitively killed the problem. Yup. Possible effect. Uh, well, that is excellent news. I, again, you have, well, I'm sorry I underestimated you. Even uh, you, I mean, I had high expectations for Deadly Massacre with a name like Deadly Massacre, but the rest of you, I was, uh, you were cut above the common adventurer cloth. Prized you haven't been promoted yet. Uh, uh thanks, but, uh, I, I wouldn't have done it without my acquaintances. Ah, uh, yes, very good. Uh, well, I put together all of those, um, I, I, apparently they were called Bartholomew Bucks. We have them for you here, and a hundred of these papers is what you want. I do my trays. Uh, well, you'll, that's not my job. Uh, and, uh, with that, uh, you have completed this adventure. Congratulations on saving the sick dragon. Uh, and with that, I would ask, would any of you like to shop? Yes. Very good. Uh, you return to the shop uh, right as you're walking in. Um, this is, I imagine, the exact point at which uh, Azarian is saying that uh, he demands a raise, and Bartholomew goes, Our raises are reserved for those who have proven themselves up to the next rank, but you did a good job today. A few more of uh, adventures like that, and we may be able to see to that. Uh, but for now, do any of you have anything that you would like to uh, purchase? Yes. Can I... Am I able to get the, the big bag on the answer thing? Uh, it costs 500. Uh, do you have 500 at the moment? I have 400 from before, and then I have now 100 then absolutely. more. Absolutely. Uh, I wish you only uh, only the absolute best of luck as you go. Is this your first bag pull? Yeah. Excellent. I uh, I wish you the best of luck as you go in. Uh, the first one's always stressful. Uh, how do we do this? Is it? Um, so what you're going to want to do is roll a d1000. Bartholomew kind of in the world presents his bag to you. Uh, just goes, go on and reach in and see what you get. So roll me a d1000. Um, in I forgot. How do you type that? Uh, so slash r um, r r one thousand um, slash r and then a space and then d one thousand. Uh, that without the period in front of it. Got it. Six hundred and ninety three. Nice. Not bad. Not bad. All right. So you reach into the bag, and your hand passes over first. Uh, it just appears to be a a simple potion, which isn't really what you're here for. You uh, you toss that aside instantly, and then your hand passes over next. Um, uh, it's some type of, of loot or something like that. Maybe one of your friends would like it, but uh, not for you. Uh, what you end up grasping, it appears to be... Um, it, it appears to be a bow. Uh, and as you pull it out of the bag, um, it's very intimidating looking uh, the actual length of the bow it appears to be the legs of spiders that have been like kind of dismembered and pulled apart and a thin thread of spider silk um, kind of runs from the two ends of the uh, the bow uh, forming the bow string and Bartholomew speaks up ah this is the blessed bow of the spider queen it is a, um, a powerful uh, ranged weapon that will allow you when you fire it to deal additional poison damage to uh, targets that you uh, strike with it. Um, however, while you are in, keep in mind that it is a uh, an item made by the drow, and while in direct sunlight, uh, the legs may have a bit of a hard time uh, forming itself. Uh, and it may be a little bit uh, squirmy. But you've gained the blessed bow of the Spider Queen. Uh, a very scary item for, I guess, I'm a good person for it on Deadly Massacre. <laughs> uh, flavor wise. You can bow to me. Nice, I appreciate it. Not a, not a problem. Uh, it's uh, a lot of poison damage. All right, uh, anyone else have anything they'd like to buy? Uh, can I buy a toothbrush? 
a toothbrush I can give you for free. And Bartholomew snaps his fingers and you find a toothbrush in your hand. Uh, a new one that hasn't been tarnished by the dragon's stomach. Anything else? But what color is the toothbrush? Oh, that's a great question. I can change that now. Uh, I'm gonna need a toothpaste, though. We can do toothpaste and is green okay on that? We were doing, uh... Uh, pink. Pink. We can make it pink. Uh, and your toothbrush becomes pink and he hands you over uh, some very nice toothpaste. Um, and... Did anyone I... else have... Ah. Well, well I, I'm not sure how to ask this, because this is the... You know, it's the wizard stuff. Would I be able to pick up a couple yes, of uh, instructions? Do, uh... Um, we'll talk about that in the in the, on the side, wheel and deal elsewhere. All right. Uh, this is the Bartholomew's secret menu item. <laughs> um, and anything else? And hearing nothing, we will be back shortly with our third and final adventure of the evening, a legend tier adventure we're going to be going into. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and we'll see you back shortly.